think the real thing he's doing there is giving a finally giving a sigh of relief because no matter what you say it would have to be building on him because so many people are pulling for him and wanting him to get this base hit that he just wants to get it out of the way. I think it's easy to imagine what goes through a mind at this moment. Boy, this is his game, it's his town, and it is his moment. Tommy Helms, his roommate, when both played here together in Cincinnati. And they started off together in the minor league, so Tommy has the same type of feeling for Pete that his family does. Son Petey Jr. His mom. From Freedom Hall in Louisville, it's the second round of the NIT. Tonight on Channel 44, the South Florida Bulls battle the Louisville Cardinals for the right to try and advance toward the tournament finals at Madison Square Garden. Good evening, everyone. This is Randy Scott along with Pistol Pete Maravich here at Freedom Hall. Set to bring you the Bulls and the Louisville Cardinals tonight. It's their first meeting ever. We're in the second round of the NIT. Pete, last Thursday night, as you know, the Bulls manhandled Wake Forest 77 to 66 in the first round. However, tonight in round two, they're on the road in a hostile arena, and Louisville has the longest streak of winning seasons going in the nation 40 straight years that streak is on the line for the Cardinals tonight it's an important game for them as well well it means a lot to them uh, uh, you know the one thing they can't do is overlook South Florida and I don't think they know that much about them huh? here's a steal Cardinals Chris West comes up with it in the corner to Jetter off the glass no good loose ball Curtis Kitchen the bull center on the wing to Bradley takes it all the way and it drops through and so far, Pete, the confidence they displayed against Wake Forest has certainly carried over into this opening half of tonight's game here in Louisville. They're playing with tremendous poise. I, I, I'm just, it's just amazing how well they're playing right now under all the adversity they are under. There's Patterson. Bombs away. Kuda with 10 points. Kuda right now is playing unconscious, really. I, I don't even know if he knows how good he's playing. But he Hello, everyone, from Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, where tonight the Tampa Bay Bandits tackle the Denver Gold in their third road game of the season, a game matching up two division leaders in this sixth week. This is Randy Scott along with Rocky Blyer and Richard Trapp set to bring you Bandit Ball from Denver tonight. Rocky, I know you've seen the Bandits in action before this season. Steve Spurrier's offense, I guess you could say predictably unpredictable, but they're a little thin at running back tonight. Uh, that they are. You know, they only brought three running backs uh, to this game out here in Denver, so that might give you some indication of what they're going to do. They might put that ball up in the air. Also, another indication is the fact that the Denver Goals defense is the number one ranked defense in the league against the rush. But knowing Bandit Ball and the way Steve Spurrier coaches, you never know what's going to happen, but it's going to be an exciting game. Well, the Bandits, of course, trying to bounce back tonight from that 42-3 shellacking at the hands of the Chicago Blitz a week ago tonight. Back deep to receive is Lonel Fee. He was third in the nation when he played it for the Houston Cougars, averaging 24.4 yards per kick return. He's a good one. And we're set for the opening kickoff at Mile High Stadium. Beautiful night for this USFL encounter between these two division leaders. And position with a deep kick. B will take it at the one. Ends it out. Tries to cut back over the five yard line, and he is drilled at around the eight yard line. Good special teams coverage by the Bandits quickly down there. Alvin Bailey, along with Leon Williams. So the gold will start with their backs to the wall at their own nine yard line. First down. The quarterback is Kenny Johnson. One of his claims to fame is that Kenny has played in four professional football leagues. The NFL, the CFL, the WFL, and now, of course, the USFL. Johnson has been extremely sharp since he got the starting call from Coach Red Miller in their third game of the season. They are undefeated with Johnson at quarterback. The running backs are Bo Matthews and Harry Sidney. Sidney, the big workhorse of this team. Sidney on the call, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. Good pursuit that time, Rocky, by the right side of that Bandits defensive line. Well, you know, as I said before, uh, Randy, you better expect a run on, that, uh, on the first down. Of course, uh, Tampa Bay was up there. 
uh, terrific pursuit. That's what's going to take that in type of intensity for Tampa Bay to shut down the uh, Denver Gold uh, running game. Take a look at the Denver offensive backfield. Sidney and Matthews, the running backs. And here's the offensive line. Rogers, Hyde, Davis, Hassauer, and Hoppick. As they break the huddle and come up to the line of scrimmage. Loss of two, second down, and 12 for the goal. Now a split backfield. Good crowd on hand, and they're still coming in. Here's the toss to Bo Matthews, the big fullback. Matthews breaks out over the 10 and is dropped at around the 14-yard line by Merv Crooker, inside linebacker, who is starting for the injured Kelly Kirschbaum tonight. You know, as we watch this replay, watch uh, the number 65 come out here, Hyde, put a great black, well, it was 72, actually, uh, to help uh, open that hole. But it was the inside pursuit of the linebackers that uh, did not allow him to get that gain. They are at the nines at the back of the original line of scrimmage, and it is a third and ten. Once again, a split backfield. Howard Balazs, one of the wide receivers, along with Lon L. Fee. Johnson, pass is dropped. Intended for Harry Sidney at about the 15-yard line, and Sidney could not find the handle. So the Bandits will get their hands on the ball. Coming on to punt for the Denver Gold will be Steve Gortz. Good crowd on hand tonight. For a USFL showdown at Rocky, only the sixth game of the season, but you could really call this a pretty pivotal game for both of these teams since they're sitting on top of their division, but with narrow leads, respectively. Gortz in the punt. Gortz beat out some pretty stiff competition here with the Broncos cap. Fellows like uh, NFL veteran Rick Partridge, one of them, back deep to receive for the Tampa Bay Bandits is Willie Gillespie. By the way, Gillespie getting a starting call tonight over Eric Trevillian. Should have a flag on that. Gillespie certainly interfered with before he had any chance to field the ball. And finally, the flag, which was a little slow in coming, is dropped. Take a look. Now, Gillespie never gets near it. He's taken out of the play quickly by James. That's Victor James, who was a wide receiver for the Denver Gold. So the Bandits are really going to have great field position when they run their first offensive series here, Rocky. Well, I think Victor James got a little carried away with uh, the intensity of this game. But the one thing the young man has to understand is he got to give that uh, receiver or punt returner the chance to uh, catch that ball. He didn't there. Got a penalty. Bad time. Gives him good field position. Well, bandit coach Steve Spurrier did some major surgery on his offensive line this week following the loss to Chicago. And left guard Bill Winters will start tonight. He's there. their backup on both sides. First down. Half Steve better. Patel, who started there last week, was waived on Thursday. And veteran Ron Michalowczyk former All-American from the University of Tampa gets the starting call at right tackle. Nick's been recovering from knee surgery, played very well last week against Chicago. Bandits have the ball at the Denver 40-yard line. The running backs are Greg Boone and Sam Platt. John Reeves, a veteran out of the University of Florida. The tight end, Gilbert in motion to the right. Up the middle for a short game that time is Greg Boone. And the carry for the good uh, I think a very good play selection on the first play uh, coming out of the uh, box especially with the idea that uh, with three running backs coming in you think they're going to throw the ball to come up with a little draw fake up the middle and uh, Greg Boone uh, gets it off to a good start. Danny Bugs the receiver at the bottom of your screen at the top is Willie Gillespie now Gillespie comes in motion to the bottom Reeves on a handoff to his fullback Sam Platt Platt for short yardage that time good pursuit and as Rocky and I mentioned at the top of the show, this Denver Gold defense is number one in the league against the rush. And they look fired up tonight. Laval Shorts in on the stop that time, the nose guard for the gold, former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Short played his college football in Boulder at the University of Colorado, not too far from here. Ball at the 32-yard line. It's third down and two. Gain of about five with a run by Platt. Once again, Willie Gillespie in motion. Flat. Trying to get around the right end. He'll have the first down and more. Down to the 25-yard line of the goal before he's tripped up over at the far sideline. Once again, good pursuit by David Dumars, number 21, the strong safety for the Denver Gold, who caught up with Flat. On this play, you got to watch number 21, Greg Boone. Right here, tremendous block. He opens that hole for Platt. Uh, that's what it is. Everybody's excited about what Boone does. That just gives you another indication of what kind of an all-around ball player he's turning into be. Well, it's first down for the Bandits. Given good field position by virtue of a short punt 
and the 15-yard interference penalty. They have the ball now at the 25-yard line of the goal. Leads over the middle, and he overthrows Willie Gillespie, his intended receiver, at the near sideline. Well, for the first time, we've seen Reeves put the ball in the air tonight. John had a little bit of a nightmare against the Chicago Blitz a week ago tonight. And I think, Rocky, it's important for John that he not throw an interception early and complete a couple of passes early tonight to maybe get some of that confidence back. Well, you know, that's that's always an important thing. He's got off to a, such a great start uh, with the four wins uh, in a row, and it did a tremendous. Last week was a, was a setback. He can't have another one this week. Uh, Coach Steve Spurrier knows that. So I'm sure that he's given John all the confidence this week. We're going to go with him. Let's get it done. Now Bugs and Gillespie at the top of your screen, but Daddy Bugs now in motion to the bottom. Takes a handoff to the fullback. Reeves sets up with protection. Pass is complete to Sam Platt, who drifted out of the backfield down around the 28-yard line of the Denver Gold. Bradley gets loose in the corner. Shot doesn't go. Follow up by Kitchen is good. That is exactly what South Florida needs. Curtis Kitchen has got to be a tough guy under the boards, get some rebounds, put him back in, play tough under the defensive board, too. And South Florida has gone to the man-to-man -man now to see if they can combat that uh, perimeter shooting by Duke. Dawkins with a nice pass underneath to Allery, but his shot didn't go. That would have been a great assist for Dawkins. Again, good defense by Curtis Kitchen, so maybe he's uh, coming alive. Randall has the ball smacked away by Nestle from behind. And here's Dawkins on the fast break. Puts up the shot. A three-point Blue Devil lead again at 26-23. Tonelli, the lob to Bradley in position underneath, and he gets it easy, too. Six and a half minutes as Rose Corner to the far side. Oh, shot and a goal. Great goal by the Oak, Peter Nogley, who was waiting for that corner at the far side of the penalty box. Can you believe this game, Randy, as Peter Nogley strikes a long flighted corner kick out of the air, side volley with his right foot. A one bouncer into the goal. Let's look at it. Here it comes. Peter Rowe serves a long corner this time. Now watch Peter Nogley just warming up, getting it ready. Hello, wham, keeps it down, one bounce. It finds its way past the near post by Von Beverns, and it's 4-3. It's not over yet. No, oh, and here comes Segoto with another charge into the penalty box. He gets by Thompson, but Tommy Burridge comes charging out off his line to cover it up. I well, we've got nonstop wall-to-wall -wall action here at Lockhart Stadium <laughs> oh, tonight. Isn't this fun? 4-3 now. The rally's still down by a goal. From Florida Field in Gainesville, Florida, the USA Cable Network presents College Football 82. Today, the Trojans of the University of Southern California meet the Gators of Florida. Hi, this is Randy Scott along with Richard Trapp set to bring you the exciting game this afternoon and historic first ever confrontation between two of the most storied football programs in the nation. Cross country rivals today, the Southern Cal Trojans meeting the Florida Gators here in Gainesville for the first time in their gridiron history. Richard, we're going to see two of the most gifted young quarterbacks in the nation at work today as far as passing arms. They've got a good core of receivers with some very uh, bona fide deep threats here today. That's right, Randy. Even though we'll see the ball in the air quite a bit today, uh, their, their passing philosophies are really different. Southern Cal will hit their wide receivers almost exclusively, whereas Florida will hit their tight ends, their backs, and their wide receivers. I think it'll be an interesting matchup between the two. The Gators coming off an impressive 17-14 last-minute win over Miami last week. The Gator faithful are set here in Gainesville. The kickoff is just minutes away. We'll be right back. Salisbury drops back, and he is ganged up on, and that is it. As a swarming Florida defense puts the capper on the second consecutive big win for these Florida Gators, who are now 2-0. They have beaten the Miami Hurricanes and the Southern Cal Trojans on consecutive weekends. Randy, this could really be the year of the Gator. They've been saying that for the last 20 years, but this could really be. They've, they've won two very big ball games, first two year, the games of the year. Well, we will be right back with a look at the final statistics and a recap of this exciting game in Gainesville in just a moment. The final score, again, the Florida Gators 17, the Southern Cal Trojans 9. Well, a relatively uneventful day in the Bay Area for both the Washington Redskins and the L.A. Raiders. The Skins went through their second day of secret workouts at the University of South Florida Field. The Raiders, meanwhile, practiced at one Buccaneer place. There were no threats, 
No allegations, no fines. Like I said, it was a fairly quiet day. It was almost a fairly quiet sportscast. Americans discovering more gold tonight in Southern California, as well as a, uh, a low chair than they did in 1849. <laughs> What? Well, what question have you been asked most today? Are you keeping track? If I'm gay. <laughs> and have you been consistent in your replies? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm gay. <laughs> now, do you want me? <laughs> what do you think about the Raiders' intimidating style of football? Well, I kind of like it myself. <laughs> I was kind of hoping they'd invite me over the showers after the game, so... <laughs> The bruisers, I'm gonna get them. It's gonna be so much fun in the pileups. The Yankees are winners in their homes openers, uh, home, blim, blim, home opener today.